Light that spark fire nation, a JLD here, and welcome to episode 1788 of EO Fire, where I chat with entrepreneurs on fire seven days a week. Productivity, discipline, focus, those are my three greatest strengths, and they can be yours too. Visit themasteryjournal.com and master all three skills in one now I'll shout with today's featured guest, Ingrid Thompson. Ingrid, are you prepared to ignite? I am so fired up. Yes. yes. Ready to ignite. <laughs> Ingrid is the founder of Healthy Numbers. She's passionate about small business startups and helps them set foundations while ensuring they are under no false illusions about cost and commitment. Ingrid is also a consultant, podcast host, and author, having just finished her first book, So You Want to Start a Business? <laughs> Ingrid, take a minute, fill in the gaps from that intro and give us a little glimpse of your personal life. Thanks, John, so much and welcome to the listeners. Um, look, I find I work mostly with people in the health professions. So that includes movement professionals, so people who work in Pilates, yoga, personal trainers, people who are health professionals, acupuncture, chiropractors, really, really terrific at what they do. But never in their courses do they get taught much about how to get started in a business and how to run a business. So they want to take great care of their clients. They want to create a life for themselves, raise a standard of their profession. And I've created a seven-step system that takes them through what they need to think about as they create, start and grow their business. And me, well, you can hear I'm from Australia. I live in Sydney, right near the city, in a gorgeous, comfortable house. We've got the sun shining in, even though it's winter, um, with my gorgeous husband and our three, sometimes four, equally delightful cats. I love yoga and surfing and wine and we enjoy travelling. Yeah, I, um, I, I've always been a bit of an outsider um, and I often don't feel like I quite fit in with the way everybody else does stuff, but that's kind of been to my benefit along the way. So, yeah. Oh, I love all of that. And I love the seven step system. I mean, I'm a step by step by step guy, so I can definitely jive with that. And Ingrid, what would you say if you could just break it down for us, for Fire Nation, your area of expertise? What is it? It's interesting how life sort of comes together. And over time, I think my expertise is taking complex concepts and making them simple to understand. So a lot of people, when they get into business, you know, they want to do the fun stuff. They're not particularly interested in the numbers and because they think that's difficult. They don't want to look at the compliance and the systems. But it's actually really simple to put those things into place to actually, um, you know, be able to run a business. So I've been drawn to working with these people before they get started in a business because I've worked for numbers of years in large corporations, in small businesses, but people who are thinking about starting a business and from the outset, it can look super simple. I like coffee, so I should run a cafe. It can't be that hard. You know, I love yoga. Maybe I should have a studio. So um, yeah, I think my expertise is in taking these concepts and making them really simple for people to understand. Well, within that, Ingrid, what would you say Fire Nation needs to know about your area of expertise that's going to really help us in our journey as entrepreneurs? I think my unique tip is to get started as soon as you can. You know, when I talk to people who've been successful in business, they often say they just wish that they had mm. started earlier. And so what I would say to people, if you're thinking about it, you don't have to quit your job and go start, but start doing the groundwork. Start finding out about who is your customer. Start finding about what is it that they're really, really looking for so that you can build your business on that and know that you're actually building something solid. You know, one of my favorite quotes is the best time to plant a tree was yesterday. And you know what? The second best time is today. So, you know, I think that idea of get started, just start doing some work. I mean, if they're listening to this podcast, that's a great place to start, you know, listening to what other people are doing. Love it, Ingrid. And one thing I will say is you, you seem to enjoy the finer things in life. I mean, you enjoy surfing, <laughs> wine, travel, cats, your husband. I mean, all these things you seem to not really take for granted and to really just kind of thrive on these things. So I feel like you have a kind of a, a really cool, balanced life, a good understanding about what it takes to be an entrepreneur. But, you know, it didn't always come that easy to you. It wasn't always that way. I mean, you've had your ups and your downs. And that's kind of where I want you to take us now is to your downs. And Ingrid, not just the downs, but the lowest of the low, the worst of the worst, your worst entrepreneurial moment. Tell us that story. Well, it has to do with my website. 
Um, and it really was. I just wanted to throw myself on the ground and cover myself with something and just stay there forever because I was working with this local developer, one of the nicest men, and he and his team had created this beautiful website for me. It looked good. I was so proud to have people go to it because my previous one was one I'd kind of cobbled together with a template and it was a total embarrassment. So I was so proud of this website. It showcased me for what I was. And I went to him and I said, well, now we have to start listing my e-products because that's what my products are. They're e-products. So it's really simple. You know, somebody buys it, the payment comes out of PayPal, that triggers the customer, receives the Excel spreadsheet or the downloadable book or whatever it was, and they sign up to my mail list. I'd done it as a customer countless times, so I knew it was something that could be done. And he could not do it. It could not be done on my website. No matter what we did, it wouldn't work. And I remember this moment of absolute sheer frustration and super conflicted because these were such nice people, but I just wanted, I I can't describe what I wanted to do to them, (laughs) but we had this friendly relationship and there was this gap between what I knew could be done and yet they just couldn't do it. And that was my business. So I had this beautiful site but couldn't actually sell anything to anybody. So I was really beside myself. With now, is this do. before Shopify and Stripe? I didn't know about Stripe and I now use Stripe. Um, and Shopify, I don't know. I Yeah, maybe it was before that. Mm-hmm. I didn't, That was never offered to me as an option. So, I, yeah, but I was just, how is this going to solve? Wow. Anyway, it was solved but I, it was just that moment when you think, how, I don't have a business. I can't set, like I can't sell anything. You can't, I mean, there is no business if you're not selling. Right. So, yeah, that was my lowest moment. Well, let's kind of talk about that because you've obviously learned a lot from that moment. Um, you know, number one, probably Googling, you know, how to sell stuff on my website. But besides that, like, what is the lesson that you want Fire Nation to take away from that tough moment you went through? And I think, John, you've just put your finger on it, is I handed over to them this whole project they already sold stuff online. They showed me a shop where they sold for a customer, they sold dresses, but that was a different process. They, you know, somebody bought a dress, it triggers, somebody has to put it in a box, take it to the post office and send it. What I was looking for was electronic. So I had handed over this entire task and not taken any responsibility for finding out myself how to actually do it. So I think, you're, you know, that is the big lesson is to be super, super clear that when you're asking someone else to do something for you, you know, whether that is to write a brief or to create a logo or any of the tasks that we do as we get started is being super clear about what is actually involved in that and making sure that the person who's doing it for you, they might be nice people and they might create a beautiful site, but is it actually going to be something that can be used and is it going to do what you want? Communication is key, Fire Nation, having the conversations from the beginning so everybody knows what the expectations are the full way through. And then I love just take 100% responsibility about everything. No matter what it is, it's you, Fire Nation. It's on your shoulders. You're the entrepreneur, period. It begins and it ends with you. And Ingrid, you've had a lot of great ideas. You've written a book. You've launched a podcast, which I was a, a guest of. I had a really good time on that. I mean, you're a consultant. Um, you founded Healthy Numbers. I mean, there's a lot of great ideas, but what would you say is an aha moment that you've had that would turn into a really good story for our listeners? And kind of talk to us about that moment that idea came to you and how you turned it into a success. Okay, so I've kind of taken a different um, slant on that question. So I hope it's going to be still useful for your listeners. I'm sure it will be. Take it away. With the other, I just want to say that I was really proud that we were able to fix the issue with the website and maintain a friendly relationship with Simon and his team because I think sometimes when we have these disappointments, those relationships can be broken to such a degree that they can never be recovered. Um, And I see Simon regularly. Um, So I think that's another lesson to take away from that is to actually make sure that even if you're disappointed and things don't work out, that you know, it's not a good thing to have damaged relationships along the pathway. Now, to my aha moment. So I can feel it like it just happened. Um, and I believe it contributed significantly to the work that I do today. You know, a couple of times in my life, I feel like I have been prevent- presented with what I call a glimpse of the future. So about five years ago, a super good friend of mine owned and ran a really successful motel in 
rural Tasmania, stunning part of the world. If anyone's been to Tasmania, you know how beautiful Tasmania is. It was on the market for sale. And I love Tasmania. And I think it would be terrific to live there. And I thought buying this motel would be a fantastic idea. And I rang my husband and I said, this is the best thing we can do. We can buy this motel. And he said, do you know much about running motels? I said, that's fine. I've worked in hospitality. I've had tons of experience taking customer service. They'll teach us the nitty gritty. We'll be great. And around about the same time, I was doing some contract work for somebody else and I had to travel to Dubbo. Now, Dubbo is in the It's about as remote as this place was in rural Tasmania, but this was in the middle of rural New South Wales. And I arrived about 8 p.m. and I was booked to stay in a motel. And the taxi dropped me off and I had to ring the bell on the outside. And in that moment, I saw the future. (laughs) There was this door leading out of the reception area into what appeared to be a residential living area. And a man appeared so slowly and with such reluctance. Everything about that man spoke volumes about how he felt. And I was being given a glimpse into my potential future. So I immediately called my husband and said, you have no idea. That idea about Tasmania, it is never going to happen. Because I think I was given, (laughs) I I was such a narrow escape. I've had a couple of those in my life where I have just, someone has given me this this future glimpse. So I get these ideas and I just get so passionate about it, but something stops me. Mm -hmm. And that man at Dubbo, he doesn't know what he did for me when he walked the way he walked out of the back of his um, motel. Uh, well, I hope that he at least has a Netflix subscription so that he can watch House of Guards <laughs> while he's he's waiting for people out there. And, and maybe that was his problem. Maybe I interrupted just at a moment when he was. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, that was an aha moment. And you did tell us how you turned it into success because what you do, you freed yourself up to do all the things you're doing today in Fire Nation. If it's not a heck yes in life. It's a no. And that's something we have to realize because when you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to everything else you could be doing or could have done with that time. So just make sure you're saying yes to the right things. Now, Ingrid, today, what are you most fired up about? Well, without a doubt, my book, I it's finished. You know, it's seven steps to create, start and grow a business. It's called So You Want to Start a Business. Um, and I've used your concept, John, of following one course to success. So I made up my mind the book was needed to be written and I finished writing my book. And then I worked on one course to success, finished my online program. So I am so excited about how these two are going to come together. And it's just going to make a big difference for people who are thinking about creating, starting and growing a business. So Super exciting. And where can Fire Nation find out more? Healthynumbers.com.au slash fire. And I have set up a special deal for um, the listeners. It's a business startup package that it contains an assessment. It contains an s- excerpt from my book and some videos to help them get started. Oof, what a package. And Fire Nation, if you think that Ingrid's been dropping value bombs, you're right. And she's going to continue doing so during the lightning round as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors. You know what's really frustrating? It can sometimes be a little embarrassing when you spend a lot of time in bandwidth creating something you're sure is going to work and then it bombs. Kind of like when you create a Facebook ad for a client or for your own business and the money goes out but nothing comes back in. Losing money, no matter whose it is, is no fun. And when you're working with clients, losing their trust is definitely not something you want to do. So why struggle trying to figure it out on your own when you can just copy Billy Jean? My friend Billy Jean is hosting a free training where he's going to select a random attendee and build an entire Facebook advertising campaign from scratch, the ad copy, the landing pages, and everything in between. He's also going to show you the same process he's used working with some of the world's largest franchises to get ROI. Claim your spot at INeedThisTraining.com. That's INeedThisTraining.com. Fire Nation, ever hear the saying, you're only as good as the people you hire? (laughs) That is the truth. But we all know it can be tough to find great talent. That's why Zip Recruiter is such a valuable resource. With Zip Recruiter, you can post your job to 100 plus job sites with just one click. Then their technology matches the right people to your job. Unlike other job sites, Zip Recruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you, it finds them. In fact, over 80% of jobs posted on Zip Recruiter get a qualified 
job candidate in just 24 hours. The best part, no juggling emails or calls. Simply screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one place. Find out today why Zip Recruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates. You can post your job on Zip Recruiter for free today. That's right, for free. Visit ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. And one more time, Fire Nation, try it for free. Visit ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. Ingrid, are you ready to rock the lightning round? Oh, I sure am. It's, <laughs> it's good to be it's good to be on a short leash <laughs> for my question. <laughs> what was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Trying to be everything to everyone. You know, as I narrowed my niche and I became clear about what I was doing, I was a business coach that, you know, I was a consultant, I was helping lots of people. But, you know, this niche that I've created, I just feel so empowered to to work with the people that I'm really here to serve and to work with and what I'm really here to do. What's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I've ever received is that the only real way to know if your business is viable is if there's actually sales. If someone is willingly taking the money out of their pocket and paying for what your business is offering. And that's, it's a business if it's making sales. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? My weekly planning and focus, you know, that stay focused on one thing to success. So I've got this big plan, this overall plan. And then every week I sit down and I look at my week ahead and I plan out what I'm going to do, the tasks that need to be done, the people I need to meet, who I need to call. And if I ever don't do that properly, it just the week goes to, I can be busy, but I actually don't do much. So yep, that weekly plan. Recommend one internet resource. Someone introduced me to a product called Voxer. It's a kind of live voice, text, photo, walkie-talkie walkie talkie style of communication tool. It's a little walkie stalky stalky. too. You can stalk <laughs> people with Voxer. Actually. You can. So it can be voice or text and it's terrific for saying something rather than having to type the whole thing out. And yet you get to say, and the best bit is you get to say it uninterrupted. And that's particularly useful for people who feel like if they're in a conversation and the other person's talking at the same time. So you get to deliver your whole message and you can, you know, you can put it into drop box, you can save it. So it doesn't disappear. It disappears in Voxer, but it, you can keep it and you can send it any time of the day or night. So if you're walking along and you think you want to send someone a message, yeah, I think Voxer is terrific. So obviously the book, So You Want to Start a Business is going to be on our bookshelves because it's a great book, Fire Nation. What other book should join that book on our bookshelves? Look, it's a book that I read a few years ago. Um, there's a few books that have made a big impact on me, but this is Dale Carnegie's biography by Stephen Watts, and it's called The Self-Help Messiah. Self-Help Messiah, yes. This book tells Dale Carnegie's story while at the same time including excerpts and much of the how to win friends and influence people. And that book is one of the most important books that was written in the 20th century. And it's the basis of so much that's taught today in, um, you know, in everything we do about customer service and how, how to nurture relationships with clients and customers. And his story is astounding how driven he was, not deterred by failure. He tried things that didn't work and he just kept on trying the next thing and the next thing and you know he came from dirt poor when that actually meant I mean that expression comes because there was nothing else except dirt Mm. and to go on and be a man who made such a difference to so many people um yeah his story that's a book I think if you haven't read it it, yep or put it on I don't know if it's on on audible I know that's one of the ways you like to listen but um yeah it is yeah it's a fantastic book and it's called the self-help messiah Self-Help Messiah by Stephen Watts, W-A-T-T-S, and he's Stephen with a V, and it's Dale Carnegie's biography. Ingrid, let's end today on fire with a parting piece of guidance. The best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. My best piece of advice or guidance, not advice, is that, you know, it seems to me that almost everyone has this little voice inside that says, what about you give this a try? And this could pretty much be everything. You know, it might just be asking that cute girl out for a coffee or it might be booking an adventure holiday. It could be starting a business. And if this is you, don't die wondering. 
find a way to assess if your business could be viable, whether part-time, a side hustle or the full entrepreneurial experience and find someone to help you. It doesn't have to be me, but you know, there's lots of people out there that can help you take that viable business idea, see if it's viable um, and, and assess whether it's something that you're going to be able to do because, you know, it's really, it's really not good to not have tried stuff, you know, is make sure you you've get your information and make a good decision. So as I said, I've created a business startup package for EO Fire listeners. Um, it's an assessment and what those results mean, a series of videos to help with your decision making and an excerpt from my book. And that's healthy numbers, as you would expect to spell it, healthynumbers.com.au forward slash fire. And I wish you well in your business journeys, anyone who's thinking about it. Oh, and they could just email me, Ingrid, at healthynumbers.com.au if you wanted to, if there was a question you had from something Ooh, I've said today. I love that. Ingrid at healthynumbers.com. And Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with IT and JLD today, so keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Just type Ingrid in the search bar and her show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. These are the best show notes in the biz, timestamps, links galore, or of course, go directly to that URL that Ingrid gave because that's got a Fire Nation special, so get over there. And Ingrid, thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks so much for having me on EO Fire. Thanks, John. Hey, Fire Nation. Hope you enjoyed our chat with Ingrid today. And I've created four incredible courses so that you can master productivity, so that you can accomplish goals and create funnels and create webinars that convert. They are free courses, Fire Nation. They're waiting for you at eofire.com. And oh, did I mention they're free? (laughs) I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Over 80% of jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified candidates. You can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free today. Just visit ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. My friend Billy Jean is hosting a free training where he's going to build an entire Facebook advertising campaign from scratch. The ad copy, the landing pages, and everything in between. Why struggle trying to figure out Facebook ads on your own when you can just copy Billy Jean? Claim your spot today at INeedThisTraining.com. That's INeedThisTraining.com.